Hello dear dream spellers. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys about Pakal Botan, considered to be the last great Mayan king, who he was and what is the prophecy he left behind. Pakal Votan was born in 603 AD. He ruled in the beautiful city of Palenque in Chiapas, Mexico from uh, 615, becoming king at the young age of 12 and ruling for 68 years until his death in 683 AD at the age of um, 80. He is considered to be the chief engineer behind the Mayan project that oversaw many inscriptions of very precise astrological information on stone monuments and temples. Many of you are probably familiar with him through um, the astonishing carvings on his sarcophagus showing him in what appears to be a spaceship. The tomb was discovered by an archaeological team led by Alberto Ruz in 1948. The discovery of the tomb began when Alberto Ruz found a tube sticking out from the ground underneath the stone flooring in a room above the Temple of Inscriptions. This tube, leading all the way from the tomb up to the floor on top of the Temple of Inscriptions, would be later known as the Earth Spirit Speaking Tube, or Telectonon, which was considered to be a channel through which Pakal Botan would communicate with the living. After four years of excavation, on the 15th of June 1952, Kin 218 White Planetary Mirror, Alberto Ruz found himself inside the Temple of Inscriptions, where Pakal Botan's body and sarcophagus laid inside his tomb, which was untouched since 692 AD. Although he died in 683, it took nine years until the tomb was finished and sealed. Um, inside the amazingly sculpted sarcophagus, the preserved body of Pakal Votan was found wearing a jade mask, symbolizing that um, he was one who gained knowledge, wisdom, and ultimately enlightenment, thus gaining his true face. And from here is where it gets interesting, because between 692 and the opening of the tomb in 1952, 1260 years passed and this is amazing because 1260 can be correlated with the artificial 1260 timing frequency referring to um, the 12 month calendar and the mechanical 60 minute hour for more information about this you can watch um the artificial timeline of the 1260 frequency versus the harmonic 1320 galactic frequency. Pakal Votan knew that humanity would be plunging into darkness since at the time the base for the artificial timeline was already set in motion by Julius Caesar who introduced the Julian calendar, the predecessor of the Gregorian calendar in um, 46 BC. This calendar is the foundation for all distorted mental patterns that affect our collective consciousness even today. So it's amazing that the 1260 frequency appears in the timeline of Pakal Botan through the closing and the opening of his tomb. What's even more amazing is that it was opened on a white planetary mirror day, since this archetype is the mirror of truth that shatters all illusions, including the illusion of artificial time. And there's an even more special number which appears in the timeline of Pakal Botan through his tomb. Um, in between 692 and 2012, which marks the closing of the Mayan Fifth Age, um, there are exactly 1320 years, which refers to the 1320 natural timing frequency. This, for me, is so powerful. It's one of those synchronicities that reveals the magic and the synchronic order of time. All of this is no wonder, since um, the Mayans were masters of timekeeping with a profound connection to the cycles of nature and of the galaxy. And 
it shows just what an important role Pakal Botan plays in the process of helping humanity return to the natural frequency of time. In fact, this is the whole purpose of the Mayan codes, to reattune us to the natural timing frequency. And I also recommend you to watch the video Who Were the Original Mayans? Before we distorted the natural order through the um, introduction of the artificial time, all indigenous cultures lived attuned to the 1320 frequency. For the Mayans, this ratio of 1320 is obviously correlated to the 13 lunar tones and the 20 solar seals, uh, which are the frequency of their galactic calendar, the Tzolkin. The Tzolkin is called the galactic calendar because it is aligned with the cycles of the galaxy, the 26,000 year cycle of rotation of our solar system around the cosmic central sun, which they called the Hunapku. Um, for more information about this, you can watch the video Hunapku, the galactic core. Um, through its 260 units, because 13 times 20 equals 260, the Tolkien describes the frequencies of creation emanating from the Hunapku, which is the source of all creation for the Mayans. 260 is a fractal of the 26,000 year cycle, um, so the Tolkien is thus aligned to the movement of the galaxy. The 1320 frequency is also embedded in the long count calendar of the Mayans, having 13 baktuns of 144,000 days each and 20 katuns of 7,200 days each. Um, I also recommend you to watch the video The Structure of the Tolkien and uh, 2012 ending of the 13th baktun of Yellow Sun. So having both the artificial 1260 frequency and the harmonic 1320 natural timeline encoded within Pakal Botan's burial, the opening of his tomb and the ending of the 13th Baktun cycle in 2012 is astonishing. It's as if he is indeed speaking to us beyond the grave, which should come as no surprise given the fact that um, he was known as a magician of time and mathematics. Through mathematics, he was able to create a language to bridge the two timelines, enabling us to consciously transcend this 1260 frequency of limitation, distortion, chaos, disharmony, and separation. Pakal Votan's prophecy speaks of the closing of the cycle of what the Mayans call the fifth sun, or the 13th Baktun, which took place in 2012. Um, I recommend you to also watch the 21st of December 2012 entering the um, Golden Age. Pakal Votan was aware that humanity would cut itself off from the natural time by adopting the um, artificial man-made time, that we'd disconnect from nature and its cycles, that we'd end up hooked on materialistic values, becoming ignorant to the spiritual realms and our sacred interconnection that we have with nature and all of creation, and that we'd fall into this collective amnesia. The 1260 frequency creates this distorted idea that time is something outside of us, something we can observe moving in a linear fashion through the ticking on the, of the clock and the daily blocks in um, our calendar, but time is so much more than we have been taught it is. And this is where I recommend you to um, watch the videos What is Time? The Spiritual Aspects of Time, Time is Art and Time and Consciousness for an in-depth dive into this topic. Um, the disconnection from the natural time isn't only what birthed our materialistic and um, globalist society, it's also one of the reasons why it's so difficult for us to connect with our higher self and our um, inner technology, aka our superhuman abilities, because nowadays it's all about using tools outside of us to replace the magic and the power that is within each of us. Um, Pakal Votan knew that mankind would fall into um, this collective amnesia, but he also knew that the only way to awaken was consciously connecting to the 1320 frequency. 
Because, without realigning to the sacred cycles of nature and the galaxy, we are slaves to the concept of man-made time, which has very destructive implications. I mean, just look at our environments. And ever since the tomb of Pakal Botan was opened in 1952, a mind stream of information, knowledge and wisdom was released. This mind stream is what enabled José Arguelles to receive telepathic transmissions from Pakal Botan, which led him to discover the law of time and set in place the um, dream spell calendar. Um, the message of Pakal Botan is that if humanity wants to avoid destroying the biosphere and itself, we need to return to living in the natural frequency of time. He knew that our rapidly growing technological society will end up destroying nature in the pursuit of materialistic values, putting money and profit above nature itself. Pakal Votan was a time traveler whose mission here on Earth was to reveal to us the spiritual dimension of reality and to help us reconnect with the natural time. Uh, his kin was a uh, yellow galactic sun, so from this we can interpret that... Um, his purpose was to help humanity harmonize with the solar consciousness emanating through our sun, from the cosmic central sun, the Hunapku, which is the one transmitting the frequencies of the Tolkien calendar spin after spin. His prophecies and um, spiritual teachings of the law of time and cosmic history transmitted to José Arguelles remind us that we need to elevate our minds and free ourselves from any reference points or concepts so we can attune to a higher dimension of reality. And by the way, if you haven't already, I really recommend you to read the six volumes of Cosmic History Chronicles by Jose Arguez and Stephanie South. The process of transition from one world to the next, from the fifth sun to the sixth sun, is already in motion. And the best way to ride this wave is holding our center, surrendering, trusting, and learning how to tap into our inner technology. One day, things such as telepathy, heightened sense capacity, the um, capacity to see other dimensions, to influence matter, one day these things won't be seen as science fiction, but as common skills people have in this world. But until then, um, the first step to attune to a higher dimension of reality is returning to the natural frequency of time, by learning how to follow and integrate the dream spell calendar. So send me a message if you have any questions about the dream spell calendar or if you want to book a galactic signature decoding session or a wave spell decoding session or um, a session exploring the members of your earth family. Um, and also letting you know that I'm putting together um, an new format for my online workshop of um, initiation into the dream spell calendar. Um, this time is going to be extended over two weekends uh, with homework in between. So stay tuned on my Facebook page or my Instagram for um, more information on this workshop and uh, the dates. Wishing you a peaceful day in La Keche.